What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Slip and Dip Podcast. This is episode number 10. We're here. It's me, Matt Wells, Kendrick Johnson over there. You guys already know him. And we do have a special guest on with us today. Somebody that just headlined a little UFC show. You may or may not know him. But the man, Kevin Lee, is on air with us right now. What's up, Kevin? How's it going, man? What's going on, brother? It's good to be here. Man, appreciate you coming on the show, man. We 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 tried to get you a couple weeks ago. We figured like he hey, he working he work, working on making Michael Chiesa cry to it on his mom's shoulder. So we saw what you were working yeah, with. Yeah. You know how it is. You know I got I got to keep my hand down, stay in the sand a little bit. You know. Absolutely, man. So it's it's been a busy weekend for you. You just got back into Vegas, man. So obviously, you know everybody's talking about the controversy of the fight. How everything went down. You've had a few hours to digest it. You said you haven't really slept yet, but you know, having some time to digest the moment of your first headlining fight. How does it feel, given the air controversy? I mean, you still happy with how everything went down? Yep. Uh, you know, I, I still don't think it's no controversy to it. You know, like even I think it's even more set in stone now. The more I watch it, the more you know people like tag me in and I see it in film. Uh, it was set in stone. You know, he he was defending a choke. You know, and then he stopped defending, you know, that, I mean, that's the, that's the name of the game is once you, you know, you got to defend yourself at all times. Once you stop defending, the, the ref has to step in, the ref has to, uh, you know, it, 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 that's on him. That's on him to keep defending, you know, waiting for me to burn my arms out isn't a, a isn't a viable defense. You know what I mean? So, so I, I ain't really even worried about it. You know, the, the, the kind, it really ain't no controversy to me. I'm already on to the next one. Uh, like you said, I just need some sleep in me right now. Then, then, uh. Then when I wake up, I'm pretty sure I, I, I really feel a whole lot better about it. So, so Kev, did, so I, I, I watched the replay of the post fight. So you went straight in from from Muon Chiesa. Now you focusing on them top five hunters. So I talk about that Tony Tony Ferguson does stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean the Tony thing. Uh, you know, again, I was just going. I was just, you know, I, you know I me. Mean? I keep it real with you, you know. So I was just telling him his flaws as what he was doing, you know, right there, he was playing a reporter role. He was playing a journalist role. Uh, I saw that they, he had wrote up like a little piece for Fox sports one right before a little prediction piece. And, uh, I mean, he was totally off on it. He was talking about, you know, I trained exclusively over at Mayweather gym and I'm, you know, doing all this boxing training and all, you know, he ain't seen no videos of me training. And, you know, I guess I'm just trying to put myself in that situation. If they ask me to do that and be, uh, on that side of the fence to be that reporter role, I'm going to do my research. I'm going to, you know, I won't speak on what I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I, I've never shown Tony nothing but love and respect. And, you know, I really ain't really said nothing bad about the man. But, you know, I'm going to call him on the shit if he, if he you know, he, he talking about he DDT'd me during the play. I'm like, what, <laughs> what, is a, I'm like, what is a DDT in the first place? And then, two, how you do it in the air? You know what I mean? Like, I, it, it, don't, it don't make sense. I think the man is either he either stupid or, you know, he just don't watch. Like, or I honestly think that he might even got us mixed up. You know what I mean? He might have thought maybe I was he, I don't really don't know. I really don't even know how to explain it. I don't know, man. You've you been spending too much time in that South Cal, uh, you know, that, that California weed ain't nothing to pick with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, absolutely. Like, it, that moment after the fight itself was was pretty special because that got people talking. Now you have a buzz about going back and forth with Tony Ferguson. Kind of got a next fight already lined up. If you know, yeah, Khabib I mean, isn't ready, you know, you know, the UFC is smart. You know that 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 may be why they put him up there. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that was probably his first or second time only doing that. So uh, they smart. You know, maybe that's what they're trying to do. But you know, I'm looking on the Khabib. I'm looking on the bigger and better. But if but if it's Tony, it's gonna be it. You know, I, I think uh, I don't know what they're gonna do with Tony. I'm, you know, I thought they were gonna make the Tony and Barboza fight happen. That's 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 kind of what you know. I'm kind of going on a word. I'm trying to pick what's best for all parties here. So uh, <laughs> I was going with me Khabib, but you beat me and Tony. I like that too. <laughs> hey, Ken, for the for the record, I've been jamming that first day out, man. You got me crunk off that. That's why that's why I do little joy. <laughs> yeah, T Grizzly actually gave me a shout out over. You know, we had, we had to, we had to hook up. You know, I, I remember uh, uh, last year when he came down to Vegas, he threw a, he threw a little uh, thing down at the club down here, and I went out and you know hung out with him a little bit. He cool dude too. So you know, hey, hey, once they go to Detroit, maybe I can have him walk me out. You know, you never know. You never know. I'm telling you, I got some big things planned for this. Uh, you know, once I headline this card in Detroit, it's going to be even bigger than this one. 
It's a two part question. Is that confirmed that UFC is going to Detroit? And um, uh, or do you think you need another fight? Say, for instance, Connor comes back, say, I'm going to fight one person left in 155, and he's going he's gonna to pick the most marketable. So, do you think you need to fight somebody like a Tony and Habib and then call out Connor? Because we know you're not scared to call out anybody. Uh, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, I got an extra call. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're good. You're good. good. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, you know, the the Connor fight in, is intriguing, but I think that's something that that needs to be built up to. You know what I mean? Uh, because otherwise, we we both lose an opportunity. Sorry, they keep calling. It. You know, the, <laughs> well, I'm telling you, but uh, you know, that that's something that can be built up to. You know what I mean? That's something that you let stew. Uh, that's the smart money. You know, like to let it stew, let it play, and then build up to that and make it an even bigger fight. Uh, that's what I was saying even about the 165 division being open, you know, going and chasing that title. And then we meet, you know, then I meet Connor on down the line, you know what I mean? So, uh, sorry, they, they keep calling. My bad, my bad. I'm, <laughs> it's all good. It's, all, it's like tossing off my concentration. Too. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so, you know, yeah, we, we'll, we'll make the Connor fight happen eventually. It, it's going to happen. Like, it, it, it's inevitable that that fight is going to happen. You know, the man's only 28. Uh, even once he fights this fight, I don't think he's gonna be done. You know, he he'll, he'll make some money, but that ain't type money that you are gonna live off of for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? You so, can't live a hundred mil. He'll come back. He'll fight, and we'll eventually end up fighting anyway. Hey, that's not that's not Dana. You keep hanging up on, is it? Nah, 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 nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah look, and, uh, what what's, what happened? What's that? I, no, I'm about that loop. <laughs> no, the reason I asked is because you know, um, you know, we spoke to Mike right after the fight last night too. Like he came in and did a little scrum right after you. And uh, he he said he called Dana and was immediately you know he said they had a little back and forth. Dana was talking about how pissed he was at Mario, and you know I don't know if you saw Dana took to Instagram Look, too. You know, this, have this, you, have you spoke thing. to Dana since? Uh, this is the thing. Dana is smart. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, controversy gets people talking, so you know Dana's gonna play up to that controversy. You know, uh, especially with Bellator coming off their big event over the week. You know, the UFC had to, you know, they, uh, I mean, I think the UFC did the right thing, you know, putting me and, me and Mike putting the future on as the main event on Sunday because this is what people are talking about on Monday morning, you know what I mean? People ain't talking about Chael and, and Vanderlei. Nobody give a damn about, you know, these old <laughs> boxes, but, you know? I mean, that's, that's the truth, though, but the controversy makes it even more, you know what I mean? Because now people want to talk about the controversy, so uh, that's the smart move for them. Dana, no, it ain't no controversy. You know, I sat next to I, I sat next to Sean Shelby on the plane, and I politic with him for two and a half hours on the way. Like, <laughs> okay, so, so that's why you didn't go to sleep look, on the plane. <laughs> say what? That's why you didn't go to sleep on the plane. Then you you try to get yeah. that next fight. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. See, I just, look, look, look. I'm already planning two, three steps ahead. So, uh, you know, but Dana, Dana knows. Dana's a smart man. He's a he, he's a brilliant promoter for a reason, and that's part of the promotion. Uh. Because controversy, you know, it, it, in some ways it's good, in some ways it's bad. But you know, nine times out of ten, good press is good press. You know. Yeah. Have you talked? Have you spoken to Dana? No, no, no. I ain't spoken to Dana yet. But uh, okay. uh, you know, like I said, I, I talked to Sean. I talked to uh, Mick Maynard. You know, I, I talked to a lot of the other uh, uh, higher ups and the execs. But uh, not Dana yet. What, what were some of the I things really, that I don't really have much? Uh, I don't really have much uh, back and. You know, one on one, like direct contact with Dana, because we both kind of got like the same type of personality too. So honestly, <laughs> I don't really feel like it would go that well. Nine times out of ten, you know what I mean? Because I'm kind of aggressive, he kind of aggressive. Like that's why me and Joe never really got along, because Joe's got that same type of personality. So uh, you know, when it comes to speaking to Dana, I kind of lead it up to my manager. He a little more level headed and a little more <laughs> so, you know what I mean like like Dana gonna call me you know if it really get down to the dirt nitty gritty Dana gonna call me some bitches and holes he gonna be some bitches and holes and then we all gonna be upset thank you uh, go ahead, Kendrick. What you gonna say? <laughs> yeah, can, 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 you, can, you, can you speak on like on on for people like you know we know you. I've only known you a couple months. We've hit it off instantly. You and Matt go a little bit longer, but how people kind of just label because they see you at the press conference like you. I can tell that you, that you kind of want people to know that Kevin Lee is a good guy, a good brother, doing things on a big stage. Like I like love the nickname Motown Phenom. They don't get that's not more than a nickname. That yeah, you're about that life, but you bring about something positive as well. Yeah, I mean, people, people going, you know what I mean? People going to say what they're going to say, you know? So I just kind of leave it up to them. Uh, I think if you really get to know me and, you know, even talk to me for 15 minutes, you'll see this is the way I am all the time. <laughs> I just give that to the people 
on, on camera even, you know what I mean? So I think some people, once they get behind the camera, like they, they kind of shy, they kind of play that politic role, and I just don't do that. I just kind of give you me uh, how I am, like, hanging out with my boys, and, you know? So I think that maybe, I don't know. I don't know what the, but people going to think what they're going to think, and it really don't make me, you know, it really don't make me no difference. I really don't care. I'm, not, I'm Like I said, I'm kind of anti-social anyway, so I, 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 the, I don't really want people to like me, to be honest. So like, those, those kind of, like, you know, that awkward situation where people are coming up and, you know, they, they, they act like they're your friend and they barely even know you, you know what I mean? I don't really, I don't even like that. So, you know, I don't really, uh, I, don't, I don't stay up at night, you know what I mean? Yeah. Word. You can't lose sleep over it, man. Uh, was that the first time uh, Keith cornered you in a UFC fight? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, you know, I was going to give, uh, originally the plan was to have Stitch Durant in my corner, you know, because I got the, the one extra corner, man, uh, just for, for the publicity. And, you know what I mean? It would have been another little <laughs> uh, storyline to the fight. But I gave it to my younger brother, Keith, because he, 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 it was a great experience for him because he'll be at that level very soon. Uh, so the more experience that you have in the fight game, the even better, you know, like, like now when he does those, those things, when he's backstage, when he's doing that walkout, uh, it won't be so foreign, you know what I mean? He'll, he'll already kind of get the gist of it. And, you know, obviously he won't start at that big of a stage, but at least he'll have some idea of what he's looking for. Kev, what you learned from about being on that big stage last night, besides that you're ready for this, but even like little things, like from your walkout to like the, the, the grease man couldn't get the grease on you because you were so crook. Is that just something I mean, you in the moment? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's, that's just kind of how I am, you know. I, am, I, I was that in Ireland, I was that in Brazil, and I was that every time I fight in Vegas. Uh, I didn't treat it no different other than that we had two extra rounds to go, you know what I mean? Uh, so I treated the fight just as I would any other fight. Even with all the extra, I think that's why the UFC kind of wanted to test me too, you know, uh, before I headline another card, you know, see how see how I do with all this extra pressure, all the extra media. And uh, I'll say, I, I mean, I, I handled it, you know, I, I thought I handled it pretty smooth, you know, it was, it felt like just it, like any other fight to me. I don't, you know, I only see, I got tunnel vision. When I'm in there, I got tunnel vision. I don't even see anything else. I'm just kind of in my zone doing my thing. And, uh, uh, you know, that's when the NTP really shined. That's when I really uh, uh, kind of flipped that switch and get going. <laughs> Yeah, so and that's why you see me. That's why you see me kind of, you know, uh, before like I, I used to get rowdy, you know, like the commissioners don't really like me because I I just kind of don't do what they tell me to do, and you know, I you know I just kind of get in that mode where I'm just like you know moving and they yeah, they you know so I, I I've actually calmed down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen a lot of people, you know, before like I guess it started at, at the press conference, you know, because you came out there with you know with the outfit and you were, you know, being all confident on the mic, like you usually are. Right. And of course, you know, people started making those comparisons of you trying to be like Connor and whatnot. Have you seen any of that, you know, since the fight last night? I mean, yeah, I mean, but people going to do that. I don't even see, I don't even see where those comparisons are coming from, to be honest. Uh, I really don't like, you know, he, he wears a business suit and you know, whatever, you know, them little, you know, he used to wear them cheap little, uh, 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 hundred dollar suits and stuff, you know? So, I don't, I don't really see the comparison, to be honest. Like, I got a totally different style, totally different uh, everything. You know, even the way I talk is totally different. You know, he, he you know, I don't get it, but people are going to do what they're going to do. You know, they, 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 you know, everybody want to, they just want to look for something. You know what I mean? And, and even then, people were saying that Connor was the next Chael. You know what I mean? And before yeah. Chael, he was the next, uh, uh, you know, Roddy Piper or whoever. You know, he, he, was, he was one of them dudes, like WWE dudes. So, I mean, of course you don't get if you have a hundred dudes, of course one or two are going to be, you know, a little more outspoken, a little more outrageous. I don't mean they acting like each other. That just mean they act, acting different than the rest of the ninety-eight dudes in this division. Right, and I think what it is, to be honest with you, is that there's so many fighters in the game right now that don't have that confidence, that don't talk like you do, that don't talk like Connor does, uh, that won't get out there and call someone out. I don't know if you caught onto this or how much you watched the the fight card last night. Out of all the fights, you were the only fighter to mention a name after they won last night. I mean, to me, they all they all acting the same. You know what I mean? So you can say they all acting the same. They all yeah, act that's... like you know. You can say you can say John Jones has been trying to pull off his best GSP impression for you know uh, since his career started. So I mean, to me, that's uh, you can say it goes both ways. You know, so I just try and be me. I just try and be who I am all the time and, and just you know let it fly. I mean, people saying. 
you know, I'm wearing, you know, different clothes and shit, but that's just because I can afford different clothes now, you know, like, you know, <laughs> like them bucks are hard to come by, you know what I mean? Diamonds, diamonds in your ears, they ain't, you know, they ain't cheap. So, you know, you got to put in the hard work before you start to shine. Absolutely. So, so Kev, now that you that you on this five um, fight win streak, and now you can got a time to reflect. Do you think in a weird way losing to Santos was a good thing? Of course, you don't want to get knocked out, but you think that's yeah, something yeah. that 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 helps you get to this level on on the cusp of being that championship mix? Uh, I said that a month after the fight. You know, after a month, it kind of took me. I'll say maybe two months to get kind of over the fight. Uh, but honestly, it was the best thing to happen to me. You know, it, it really kind of. Kind of, I think that, like I said, experience is everything. So that experience just kind of really set me over the top and really uh, made me more aware of the game. You know what I mean? And, and, and gave me more respect and and, and made me see that uh, uh, you got to respect everybody at all times. You know, I did I did have respect for Sato, but only uh, uh, on the ground. To be honest, you know, I only have respect for his, for his jiu-jitsu. And once we were on the ground, he grappled a little bit. I felt his strength. I just kind of was like, oh yeah, no, it's gonna be easy, you know what I mean? So I kind of let my guard down, and 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 I see, and I know that now. Even even if uh, Mike would have survived that first round, I would have came out, I would have still fought the exact same way in the second round, you know, keeping my distance, staying on my toes, uh, uh, picking them apart from distance, and you know, taking the takedowns when they came. I would have fought them the same way. I wouldn't have uh, uh, changed up. Where maybe if that Santos thing didn't happen, then I would have got overconfident, you know, then he would have jumped on my back, and it would have been, a, you know, it would have been different. So. Uh, you know, I've already been in those bad spots. I've already been in those bad situations. There's never been a fighter in combat sports history to go undefeated. You know what I mean? You need those defeats. You need those losses to kind of teach you those lessons. Uh, people say that about Floyd, but they don't realize, like, Floyd had eight losses in his amateur career. Uh, it's, it's those types of losses. You know, we, I didn't, you know, in MMA, we don't even have an amateur system set up yet. So you kind of have to hop right into the pros and, and get that competition experience and get those losses out. Yeah, and sometimes it's on the big stage and, and, and people hold that against you, but they don't understand that's just part of the game. So uh, there's never been a fighter to, to, to ever go undefeated and, and there never will be, to be honest. Do you think Chiesa kind of did the same thing to you? Like he didn't think your ground game was going to be as tight until, until he got embarrassed and went limp? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. And I, I think he was even in denial for a little bit, you know. I don't think that he went I, – I don't think that he knew that he went out. You know what I mean? He, he, it was a blood choke, you know. You can't, you can't, you can't tough out a blood choke. Uh, people are comparing it to the Justine Kish choke, how she was able to tough it out, but they don't realize she had the choke against her – the front part of her throat, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh she was choking with the forearm. If you look, my elbow, and you, you can tell by where our elbow placement is. I mean, I'm giving a jiu-jitsu lesson here, but, you know, I feel like I got to because people don't understand the, the, the subtleties of the game and how, how that can make such a huge difference, you know. Uh, my elbow is right in the middle of his chest, which means that my, my bicep and, and, and the meaty part of my forearm are the ones that are squeezing on his neck. There's no squeeze there. My arm doesn't squeeze to give out, you know. It's just cutting off the arteries, and there's no, there's nothing you can do about it. It's a slow choke. It's not a grit, you know. When you see a guy gritting, that means it's a pain choke. It's a slow choke. It's, it's here, and before you know it, it he's out. You know, it, it was the exact same choke I hit my, uh, 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 Mustafa with, and he went out unconscious. You know, and and, I, and he went out before even knowing it. You know, and it was mm -hmm. the exact same choke that I hit Francisco Trinaldo with. Uh, he just was a little more vet of the game, and. and but you saw how quick the tap was, even with Francisco. You know, as soon as the choke on, you know, the, 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 that, that window was closing. So I think that window was closing for Mike, and he didn't realize the door shut. Uh, yep. You know, I seen him after the fight, you know, and, and I seen him in the, in the – and he was a little, you know, depressed. He was down because I think he, he either saw the footage or he finally came to terms with it that, you know, hey, that's poor defense. You know, I was I was on his back for two minutes. That's, that, I mean, I'm honestly kind of – I was honestly kind of shocked by how bad the defense was there. Or, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm I great on the back. I have great offense, but, you know, yeah, I was expecting a little more. Yeah, I don't, I don't, also, I don't, don't think people realize how short that window is. Like you were saying, like, when that window starts to close, like, it comes quick. And then also yeah. at the same time, as soon as you release that pressure, the window opens back up really quickly. Like, exactly. I, I've been in that position, too. Like, I train, you know, I know how it is to be choked out. So, I've been there. But um, I think that was part of the problem was, like, he didn't realize it was just that window. Like, right when the window shut, you let go because Mario Yamasaki comes in. And then he's like, oh, man, what just happened? Like, why do you stop? And again, Mario, Mario's a black belt, you know what I mean? So, Mario's been choked out. That You know, when you, when you, 
when you know and you, when you know jujitsu and you see it up close, you can see it. Uh, the second that his hands stop fighting, Mario stops it. You know, Mario's smart. But the second that I let go, th those those blood waves open back up. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and the blood rushes right back to the brain, and it's very, very quick. You know, it shuts off very quick, and it opens up very quick. Uh, it only takes one, two seconds, you know? It, 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 people don't understand that, so, you know. Yeah. And, of course, Mike, you know, Mike's got a strong mindset. I said that before the fight. You know, uh, uh, I, I said I was going to have to break him physically before I did mentally. So even after I broke him physically, he still was mentally, he was still, you know, mentally he was still ready to fight. I think he, even if, you know, it was like it was like when you knock the guy out and he's like, oh, you know, you know, grappling with the ref and whatnot because he's still ready to fight because he's mentally strong, you know. But yeah. you, you can't you can't deny the physical, you know what I mean? There's nothing there. Has, there was really nothing that he can do, you know. I got my arms wrapped around your throat. What are you gonna do? Sit there and, and wait and hope that I let go. It wasn't gonna happen because I still got 45 seconds. I was gonna, you know, you know, break did before that happened. Yeah, he said he he said he's gonna file a protest, man. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean they ain't gonna give him nothing. I mean it's it's, it's it's ridiculous. So he can waste his time if he wants to, but uh, uh, it, it's, I mean that's on him. I guess if he if you want to if you want to spend that little money that you got, then spend them on the lawyers. Then go ahead, brother. Hey, hey, hey! Far for me to tell a man what to do with his money. That, that, that's what we like on some of the podcasts. We, we won't see the real Motown phenom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. Kevin, did y'all did y'all kind of bury the hatchet on like a, a competition level? Like y'all get get respect. And how long how long are you gonna be at the, out the gym? Cause I know you got banged up a little bit. You gonna take off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time? My, my knee is a little banged up. Uh, I go see the doctor in the morning, so I, I'll be able to tell. I need some sleep right now, but uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I thought we did, but apparently we don't. So I don't know. If you want to get it in, we can. But it's gonna be like I said, like I said on, on the Fox Sports. Uh, broadcast. I'll take the fight just because I think it's easy money. Like you know, honestly, I thought I gave him a little more, too much credit. So uh, you know, if he if he want to do it again, if he want to run it back, you know, I walked over, I tried to shake his hand, and he didn't want to shake my hand. And but you know, whatever. I don't really. I ain't gonna lose no sleep over it. I, I, I will. <laughs> look, I'll still on, on, your, on your career tra trajectory, are you where you want to be at? Because like I covered, like I heard, I've heard your name. Of course, we know each other on the personal level now. But it's kind of crazy how you. Like my mom's like, did that black guy win last night? Cause she didn't. Know, she knew I was going to the fight. She even know <laughs> none of the scene, and even know y'all name. But you got people that don't even watch the sport. It's like remember yeah. that press yeah. conference and want to know. So how you? How, but, what, what is what is your plan? Of course, you want to be a champion, but is things going now from in and out the cage off that press conference and getting this big win? Like where you want to be at, or you still like look like you got some time to go since you're a young man in this game. I, of course, I still got some time to go. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm young. I still got a long time left. Uh, uh, but, you know, like I said, I sat next to, to, to Sean Shelby. We politic the whole way. I kind of, you know, I kind of laid the groundwork. I think uh, I think they see a lot of value in it, uh, especially with, with, with Mayweather fighting McGregor. You know, McGregor's going to bring over a, a huge influx of those fans, uh, and they need something to attach to, you know, because he ain't going to come back right away. So, uh, you know, hey, I'll let your boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ken, I, I got to follow up on this question, man. This response you gave my boy Kendrick here last night at the uh, during the little post fight scrum. Uh, yeah. He mentioned, you know, about like who would be next for you, and you said something that kind of struck me. You said you could go through all the names at the top of the division right now and, and say how you would beat each one of them. Can we do that real quick? Can we run through each name? <laughs> <laughs> Give us a breakdown. Give us a breakdown. Let's so, let's do it. All right, let's, let's go it. through it. So. This is the rankings right now. These haven't been updated since your win, okay? So, gotcha. first one above you right now is someone you got history with, Aldi Aquinta. <laughs> Al, Al, you know, Al's easy. You stick and move on Al, you know? Uh, Al's going to sit in the pocket, look to throw that big right hand. It's a loopy right hand. You throw straight shots down the middle. Uh, and then take him down. And, you know, his submission defense is really weak. So, uh, you know, you take him down, you beat him up. But Al, you get fired up, and he, he's just going to come out with you. All you got to do is avoid the big right hand. You know, it's like fighting, uh, you know, it, it's like fighting one of these old school 2005 characters. So, you know, yeah, Al, Al's an easy one. Al's not even one that I'm really looking forward to. He's got to bump his way up. Benil Darius. Benil, you got to drag in the deep water. You know, Benil's a uh, uh, Benil's. A great athlete, but you know, I don't know, just something about it. It, it. It's like his body type, you know. He's got that 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 kind of slow burn body, he, or I don't know. The man's just out of shape, you know what I mean? So <laughs> what else can I say? Like you know, 
You just got to drag him into the deep water. You know, I definitely take that one on a five rounder, and, and, and I don't think he would stand a chance at winning the decision. Dustin Poirier. Ooh, Dustin's a good one. Dustin's a good fighter. I mean, I, I will get that to him, and I've always said that from the beginning. I wanted to fight Dustin years ago, uh, and I still want to fight Dustin. You know, we can still get it in. So, uh, Dustin, you, you know, you, you just put pressure on Dustin. You know, I think the kicks, uh, the range, you know, once you set that range with the kicks, uh, then he'll start stepping in and you start touching that chin because, you know, he, he, he does show that, you know, he, he can get hit. Uh, uh, on that chin pretty solid up the middle so I think you keep the range you know what I mean with the kicks and then come up the middle with the shot Nate Diaz oh Nate's easy Nate's easy money come on the blueprints uh, Nate's got what 15 losses the blueprint is already out there for Nate I don't even think I need to I don't even think I need to state the obvious you know so you know it, it, uh, only thing you can't do is go out there and try to be a dummy and throw left uppercuts against the man uh, who's a tall, rangy southpaw boxer? You know what I mean. You yeah. can't fool the Conor McGregor. You know, it's like, it, 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 you only thing you can't do is be stupid. Like that's it. <laughs> Otherwise, it's an easy fight. Michael you Johnson, all by the same method. <laughs> Mr. Michael Johnson, Mike, you hit hard. Mike, you hit hard. Mike, Mike, Mike too little. Mike too little. You know, Mike don't get taken down. Mike don't get beat up. Mike, you hit. You just hit Mike hard. I think you just walk through Mike shots. He's too little. You know, he got that speed, you know what I mean? But once you grab a hold of him, you slow him down, you wear him out, uh, then that then the size gonna come into factor. You know, I don't think he even realizes. Edson Barbosa. Edson's a tough one. Edson's a tough one. I mean, again, you, you push him, I think you push the pace, uh, push him into the later rounds, you know, and, and then you and you know, you, 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 you keep it a gritty, you know, you gotta make it nasty against Edson. You can't let him Go out there and, uh, and and show off on you. So you make it. You know, I think the, Benil Darush fought a, a perfect fight against him. You know, I would stick to that same game. You know, I think Benil did it perfect, except Benil got tired. You know, and Benil gets tired in damn near every fight. So you know, you gotta do that, and I get tired. You know, so it's it's pretty simple. Eddie Alvarez. Oh, Eddie's easy. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's easy. Come on, Eddie, Eddie. You know, Eddie's washed up now. You know, I, I don't know. Eddie ain't want to fight convincingly. And, since he beat Michael Chandler, I think you know. So, I mean, Eddie, you just beat from bell to whistle. You know, he 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 on the down slide. You know what I mean? So, Eddie gonna try and hold on to you. Eddie gonna try and outcraft you, but uh, you just beat Eddie well off of athleticism. Now, now we're getting into the into the hot topics. Tony yeah, Ferguson. Tony, you hit Tony a lot, a lot. Tony gets hit a lot. You know, the defense is terrible. You know, he's got that 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 real awkward, you know, switching stances a lot, you know, you hit him in between those uh, stance switches, you know, real flat footed, real crazy on the ground. Uh, you settle position on the ground, just like Danny Castillo or, or like a lot of these guys, once he gets on the ground, uh, you settle position, you hit him a lot. So, you know, you just got to keep hitting him. I think you just can't get, you know, he's got to kind of, he's kind of got that Homer Simpson uh, defense, you know, where he's like, okay, you can hit me, but eventually you're going to get tired of hitting me. So you just got to make sure you don't get, you know, you just keep hitting him. And what well, and Habib and, and, and uh, on, on a personal note, why do you want Habib so bad? Because that's a name. Because like Tony Ferguson is like, hey, you need to wait your turn now. You know, I want Habib. Why why do you want Habib so bad? Because everybody thinks Habib is this, is, is such a monster. You know what I mean? And, and they got such a, a clout against him. You know, and, and, and this guy is has been the uncrowned champion and all this. You know, so I just you know that it, just because of the aura surrounding him. You know, Tony don't got that same aura. You know, Tony don't got that same. You know, when you ask somebody about Tony, they're like, oh, he's tough. You know what I mean? Like, and and, and, and when, whenever you say a fighter is tough, then that means they just, you know, they ain't really got no, you know what I mean? I need, I want something to get me up out the bed. You know what I mean? I want something more than just tough, you know? So, uh, I want a real, a, a real challenge. And I think Khabib really kind of presents that challenge, you know, for Khabib's grounds, you know, Khabib's got some of the best ground upon the MMA, hands down. Like, I'll give it to him, you know what I mean? So, I, that's the kind of challenge that I want. Not just somebody that's tough, you know what I mean. So, uh, but we can be, you know, he's slow, he's, he, you know, I, I, I ain't gonna give it all away, but you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do what you say? So basically, you're saying like um, people look at Habib like he's the boogeyman of the division. Exactly, exactly. You know, and, and that's what he's been doing, and I'm here to show. And no, uh, no, I'm shining that flashlight on the board. <laughs> Of course, I'm the last impressed. one. The look, last look, one is you, left. You see, you see, I went out with T. Grizzly. You know, he's got the he, he got the uh, the 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 Grizzly Bear, the hundred thousand dollar Grizzly Bear Diamond Out. So I might borrow that bad boy. And, and <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He, he said he wrestles bears, man. You got to get in there with one, huh? 
<laughs> That's what they say. That's what so, they say. Last one, obviously, the man with the belt, Conor McGregor, who's who knows when we'll see an octagon again. So yeah, I think honestly he'll he'll be on the decline when he comes back. You know, I think he's been on the decline for a minute. I think he will be on the decline even more when he comes back. You know, his skill set is just it's starting to stagnate. You know, so uh, uh, you know you just put the pressure on him, keep the pressure on him. He's too small. He's too small to hang with us fifty five You know, you see guys like me and Kiesa. You know, like a lot of these guys that I fought, you know, like Francisco Trinaldo's bigger than me. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, and right now I'm sitting here, I'm 185, 189 pounds, you know. So, uh, you know, I think you put the pressure on him and, and you take him down and, he, and he's out of this world. Hey, he's going to sit there. He's going to sit there and close guard. Come on, man. <laughs> you, said, you, you just threw, threw out your weight, Kev. Like I, I know it's your livelihood, but what the hell y'all be doing cutting twenty five pounds in four days? That is that just sounds like insane. I know that that's your that that's your profession, that's your job. But like, if somebody just told you they did that and you went in the fight game, you probably think they stupid, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, it is stupid. It is. It, I mean, it's incredibly stupid. I'll say it's stupid again. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's, a, it's it's a, it's some of the dumbest things that I do. Uh, and I do it like four times a year. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm sick of doing it. So yeah, no, nah, it's incredibly stupid. It's taking years off my life. I know that. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, it ain't smart. Was was there something different with this cut? Because I, at least as far as I know, I don't recall you having you know coming into like this heavy before. Or is that just no, like nah, something that's been? For the most part, I do about twenty twenty two pounds of, of water. You know, uh, and that's that's how it's been from the last maybe. Since I fought, uh, I fought James Mutasseri. I think was the first weight cut that was that heavy. Uh, okay. Before it was only like 17, 18. But you know, again, I'm getting big. You know, I'm just, I'm just growing as a, you know, I'm, I'm 24 now. You know what I mean? So I'm getting a little bit bigger. That was when I was like 21, 22. You know what I mean? So you know, it's just, it just comes naturally. You know, like it, you, the more I train, the bigger I get, the more muscle I put on. You know, and it's hard, it's getting harder and harder to cut back on that muscle. So eventually, I'll have to go to 65. Absolutely, yeah, man. Uh, listen, Kevin. I mean, I appreciate the time. Most Obviously, definitely, you know, man. Super tired Thank you for taking take care of us, man. Will you be at UFC Fight Week? Yeah, yeah I'll be here. I'll be here for sure. Okay. Uh, hey, um, I'm, I'm sending out personal request. Can, can we can we link up? I'll be out there. Matt gonna be here in Dallas, but I'm gonna be out there, yeah. and I de- I definitely want to go to Mayweather Boxing Club and see you spar. <laughs> uh, my dude, my dude. Yeah, yeah. They get me out there for sure. I got you. Hit me up. For sure. Appreciate it, man. First ever, hey, man, we your first ever guest on the Slip and Dip podcast, man. Oh, well, my man, my man. <laughs> hey, can you show us some love on social media, brother? Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I can shout out on anything. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, man, get some rest. Man, let that knee yeah, heal yeah, up, man. Good. Look, I'm, going, I'm in there right now. Absolutely, man. I appreciate the time, buddy. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks, brother. Have a good one. That is it. First guest on the Slip and Dip podcast, man. <laughs> I, 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 if it was on scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it a 14. <laughs> hey, he he gave us some heat right there. He gave us some real heat. He went off, went off told us how he's going to break down and beat the entire lightweight division. Um, you can tell he's really been, been like studying these dudes. He ain't just saying it like out of arrogance. It's like this yeah. man is about – the main thing I respect Kev is that he's about that life, but he knows when to shut it on and off, and he ain't just shooting from the hip. This man is on his game. He, he eats, sleeps, and breathes MMA, and that's what you need to be good. You don't just show up on fight night, oh, and get clunk and all that, <laughs> and do the world, but you don't do nothing. He gets clunk, and he about that life, and he getting, he getting people out of there. Yeah, he, he really does, man. He really does. And that's the thing I think a lot of people don't realize is that the man is really smart. Like, he he said that last night. You know, he he's very aware of what's happening in the cage. He comes, he comes in prepared. You know, he talks a lot, but... He kind of uses that as a, like a, a, a guise to make people think he's not really on top of as much exactly. as he really is. Like the dude, he's he's smart, he's sharp, he trains the right way. Obviously, he just mentioned the weight cut, so maybe we we talk about the nutrition thing, so he's not cutting twenty pounds. All I heavy still day. I still get that. I've been coming UFC, and the thing, the crazy thing that trips me out is in boxing, it's not an issue. Like Floyd Mayweather hasn't fought in two years. I guarantee you, for like the him and McGregor are fighting at one fifty four, I guarantee you he doesn't have to cut weight. Yeah, yeah. to you, yeah. Uh, McGregor. Yeah, before no, it's, it's it's MMA, man. MMA's got that weird that weird thing going on, man. It, it started forever ago, and now guys are like get down as small as possible, you know. But hey, if you're doing it, make sure you're doing it and being successful while you're doing it. You know, guys like 
I mean, while we're on the subject of weight cutting, Johnny Hendricks, man, how, how the mighty have fallen man. and how the mighty have fattened at the same time. <laughs> hey, his own personal coach will be, can be, I guess, um, Steve Wright. We trying to line him up for y'all to try to get some behind the scenes on. I don't, I, it's like, I hate to see this fall, but it's, it's like, ever since the, um, he, I actually, I, I actually thought he won Wabi Lala 2 and lost Wabi Lala 1. But um, ever since that fight, he's not been the same guy. And just like now, it's like he's too small for 185 and too big for 170. So it's like he's in no man's land. It's like his his better days are behind him. It, it's 100% discipline is what it is, man. It, it's not that he can't make the weight. It's just he's not disciplined. And I, I've heard You stories. think? You I've, think? I'm going to cut you off. He's been doing this for a long time. Like, I literally, the first time I saw him um, up close was getting ready for the um, Lawler 1 fight. Um, right after the GSP, and he had just started his training camp. He was 210, and he cut down to 170. I think it's just one of those things. He don't realize you can't do that shit at 33 that you were doing at 27. It's discipline, bro. It's discipline. It, it's, I, I know stories behind the scenes, people that have told me personal things, talking about how he does stuff that he's not supposed to do, especially in preparation for a fight. Now, you can also – take stuff on the record that he said, even leading up to fight week. He was on the UFC Unfiltered podcast, and he said something, I forget the exact quote, but it was something along the lines of, oh, I was going to start cutting wheat, uh, start cutting weight today, but I decided against it. And this was like on Tuesday. So like, it, things like that, you know, when he says it, like he's not trying to hide it per se. He knows, he knows it's a discipline issue. He knows he can make the weight. It's just being motivated to do it. The man was a champion. The man's lost a few fights, changing weight classes, possibly on his way out. You know, it, it's kind of a tough thing, man. I, I really don't think his heart's in fighting anymore. I don't think he really has that desire to become a champion again, um, which is fine. I mean, you, you reached the top of the mountain. You were there. You held that strap. You know what it's all about. You know, it, if it's done, it's done for him, you know, and that's kind of it's kind of sad to see him go out by being unprofessional. <laughs> my man, my man, bad retired people. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if he's not done, like, I mean, let's be real. What's he fighting for? Yeah. Like, if you're going to do, if you're going to show up, disrespect your opponents by not making weight, things like that. Like, after jumping up a 15-pound weight class, and, like, as soon as he came around that corner at weigh-ins, I was like, oh, Johnny's about to get on the scale. He, he's in middleweight now. He'll be all right. <laughs> and then you see that look on his face. I'm like, no. What's the look, bro? He, no. He gets on the scale and he does the whole. I was like, this dude, uh, he really I, is about to miss weight at 185. Are you serious? I, I, I challenge you. Are you going to ask Steve Wright if we get him on here next week? Why, I, why does he do that? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And I've I talked with, uh, you know, he was working with uh, Lou Giordano, um, his nutritionist, who got him ready for, you know, a, a couple of the fights before that, uh, the Stephen Wonderboy fight. You know, um, and got him there, but it's just, you know, he even 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 Lou. When I talked to Lou, man, Lou said Johnny's tough. He's tight. Like you got to stay on him. It's just discipline. The dude likes food. Food's delicious. <laughs> I don't blame him. But at the same time, your job's to cut weight and make this weight you signed a contract for. You got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> Speaking of retirements, I hate to see it. It's just I've seen it way too many times. BJ, oh, please, yes. man. I was there with the Frankie Edgar night when the real the real retirement happened, and that was hard for me because before I even start watching UFC, I didn't know nothing. I'm like, man, he has a cool nickname. I'm going to watch this little dude. Oh, he can fight. That's my guy. BJ Penn and, and Rampage were my two first guys that I was like, oh, I got to watch these guys fight. So to see him going from dropping Matt Hughes and running out the cage to – that Dean Seaver literally kicked the shit out of him, and I'll say it again, literally kicked the shit out of him. And like, if they fought like five years ago, he Dean Seaver would have got knocked the fuck out, don't you think? <laughs> Seriously, it was just like very like oh. I, felt, I felt every kick, and that dude was snapping those kicks too. And I was like, man, BJ, please hang it up. I, 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 I as a fan and somebody that just appreciate the sport and appreciate what he's done for the sport, it was hard for me to watch. Just imagine his family and stuff. And people that know him, business associates. Man, I, I don't know if I would be that confident in it because <laughs> Dennis Sievers, he's Dennis Sievers not a pushover, man. He's he's like in this class the second right round, now. Like the second round, his, man. He he gets him out of there. If he did what he did in the second no, round, he gets I, him out I of there. I agree, I agree. But a lot of people, man, they don't give Dennis Sievers respect. Um, What's he done? They, he's a tough dude, man. He's got the best spinning back kick in the whole game. True, can't deny. But but but, but 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 what what did Kev just say about tough people? Hey, some people get beat. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it for sure. 
But at the same time, it's like, I agree with you 100%, man. To see BJ get worked like that, like, that was my first time witnessing a BJ pin fight in person. That's my second. They both were in that, the Frankie Eric one was worse. Yeah, well, he got stopped. That one, that one wasn't even a contest. Yeah, that's the first time I saw him too. So I'm like, yeah, I get to see the man, the prodigy. Which in his prom, I tell people that. Uh oh. Yeah. That was no, that was no BS nickname, the prodigy. Yeah, like as we see right now on the on the stream here, you know he. That was that clip where he dropped Dennis right there, and I was I, like, he gets man, him out of there. Five years ago, he gets him out of there. He gets him out of there for sure. But he just came out so flat in that third round, man. And, and it's oh, his gas tank was on so e so e like it was. He, I've not, I, I I can't recall the last time I saw somebody come out that flat after having success in the first round after dropping somebody coming out in the third round. It was just like man, you could probably go back and watch that replay. I'm pretty sure the last two minutes he maybe threw two punches. He was retreating his ass. Off. That's all I saw. And, and getting blasted the whole time. Seaver was hitting him with every type of kick in the book. Just clapping him with those leg kicks, like ringing out through the whole arena. It was, man, I don't know. It was kind of tough to watch because, you know, I'm sitting there. Obviously, you know, we're, we were sitting there cage side watching it. And I look around and everybody was just had this look on their face like. Oh, did you see my look? <laughs> yeah, I was everybody like, really? man, come on, BJ. Like, man, we don't want to see this. You know, everybody had that look like, all right, it's time to hang him up, man. Like, it's, it's not a good look. Last night, what you think? Great uh, for, for those of you who know me and me and Matt were live case. Uh, if, you, if you see, you see the brother with the hat in front row. That's me, Navi. I, I, it's part of the outfit. Sorry, man. We're trying to break the rules. Shout out to USC PR team for taking care of us. But it was weird because it wasn't like a main event. Like it wasn't like the Vegas feel. But it it, it like it was I get undercover delivered. Like if I was paying money, I would have paid for that over that Bellator craziness. On Saturday. <laughs> that Tom um, Fuller. Well, yeah, I agree with you just because I would rather see guys. Like, okay, listen, I understand Bellator's card. It's a different animal altogether, though. Like, I, I'm kind of bouncing around on thoughts as I'm trying to get all this out. Like, Bellator <laughs> is a different animal altogether. Like, you know when, you go, you know when you're watching a Bellator card, you're watching more of a spectacle. You're watching more of a... A show. Senior citizens. Yeah, like when you're watching UFC, you're watching more of a sport. You're watching guys that are up and coming, that are trying to become champions, top of the game. Bellator, you're getting guys that have been knocked out of the UFC. You're not. You're watching guys that built their name in the UFC, for the most part. Taking it back to Bellator, having some more fun fights. Yeah, you're not going to get all the fame and notoriety of being a champion there that you will in UFC. And you can have fun fights there. You can have a lot of stuff make sense for you. But it's just two different products altogether. You know, I love Bellator's presentation. Like, that's that's my favorite part about it. Like, they get the stage. They get the damn near pro wrestling entrances for the guys. You know, they have fun with it. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, what is what is a win, like, what does Chael Sonnen winning mean in Bellator? Doesn't, win, doesn't mean anything. Um, I kind of wanted to keep Kevin on to talk about this. But, I like, he was tired. So, I you know, we let him go. But, you know, Ke like he, he's real critical. Like, I don't know if he watched the card or not. The bout order of that card made zero sense. Oh, zero. No, I was, I was thinking. I, here's the thing. As you know, I don't got time to waste my, 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 my Saturdays on some nonsense. <laughs> so what was – okay, I get the Phil Davis one. You want people to watch, so you put them in the prelims. I'm kind of disappointed because that's only five I really want to watch. And I go watch the main event card. I'm like, what? So I'm like, all right, I was already disappointed with that. Well, how are you going to have Chill and them fight as the main event, but then you have them after you had the, um, the who's the 40-year-old versus the, the youngster? After you have Fedor and them. How, how Fedor, I know Fedor and them didn't have a belt on the line, but you hyped them up. Like, I don't watch Bella 2. I don't even know about the guy that, um, that, Chell, the guy that, got, that broke his ankle. Oh, Michael Chandler? Yeah, I, 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 like I heard his name. That's the first time I've seen him fight. So I know that's a chance. How can, they didn't get no promotion. That's why I, don't, I barely knew he was on the card. There was no promotion. The, the promotion was based around Chell and Vandalay, these senior citizens, and Fedor and Matt Mitrion. And, but they're not in the final two. It didn't make any sense. No, yeah. It's like Mike. it's hokey pokey, Scott Coker. <laughs> hokey pokey. Listen, here, here's the problem I have is that you have three title fights on the card, and you put a you like a debut fighter like after some of those title fights like 
And then that debut fighter got wrecked in 30 seconds. Like, that's why you don't put debut fighters in that kind of spot. Like, I wouldn't even put a Brock Lesnar when he first came over, like, in that spot. This is Dominic Reyes. Like, well, I mean, hey, he had an awesome shoot laser of a left hand. Um, but I'm just saying, like, that that kind of, it didn't make sense, man. And the funny part, not for uh, Aaron Pico, obviously. Like, you want to go out there, you want to win your debut, you want to have a good performance. But talking with the guys on the MMA latest uh, editor chat, you know, I said, Pico's about to get wrecked in 30 seconds here just to complete all the madness that's happened so far tonight. Goes out there, gets wrecked in, what was it, 26 seconds? I was like, man, I just predicted that. Who, 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 to, who told you that Fedor was going to go to sleep? Oh, yeah. I mean. <laughs> I told you. Listen. <laughs> Another one to the sparkling record. We, we, we make it six in a row. Six yeah. and a half, you will, if you want to throw in. Fredo was a bonus. That was between me and Matt, but Kevin Lee, another check for the good guy, six in a row. Right. Yeah, man. Uh, Chandler getting the seat pulled out from him also got that fight stop. You saw that clip, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that because was he hurt or he, he was hurt? Like his ankle was completely jacked up. Yeah, I can't put no pressure on it. But he looked like he got up and fell down like a yeah, first watch. Sick. Yeah, but then they watched it back. No, they pulled the seat out from under him, and then that's when the guys, that's when the doctor was like, "All right, you can't even stand up." Like Uh-oh. that's not what just happened. He got the seat pulled out from under him. But <laughs> listen, I mean, I hate seeing guys like we've seen uh, Jamie Varner. I don't know if you remember that or not. Jamie Varner had that happen to him in a fight where he rolled his ankle severely and kept fighting, and his ankle was gone, and he still kept fighting. And there was like multiple times from throughout that moment, like where he's check, check, trying to fight, kept trying to plant. And he, his ankle would just be gone, and he'd fall over on it, and he'd get back up, keep trying to fight, playing again, fall on it. It was just so nasty to watch. <laughs> what so, do you think the doctors be saying? I was just like, like we see something like that. It's like, why well, was there even a discussion, bro? You fell three times without any 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 non contact yeah. injury. You can fell three times. No, it's I, like, so why you don't even like you you conversate? Are you okay, man? Like, like he gonna say no? I'm not. I mean, yes, I'm. I'm a, I need to stop it. You know, like I don't get what the doctors be doing. Every, Every fighter is going to be like, you better not stop Exactly. Fight. Unless if I'm like on the It's a belt on the line too? Yeah, he definitely didn't want to stop. Of course not. Of course not. But Chandler, he'll heal up. He'll get right back in there. That dude, he's one of the best that does it in lightweight. You know, he's one of those guys I wish would ever go, go over to the UFC. But uh, obviously, he's got a good thing in Bellator, so there's no reason for him to do it. Um, Phil Davis, Ryan Bader, that was the most boring fight of the night, I think. So I, I missed nothing? You didn't miss anything there. Uh, James Gallagher, man, that dude is—he's the real deal. He beat Shinzo Machida. That was a, that was a good fight. That dude is something special. Um, Conor McGregor's buddy, training partner for forever over there in Ireland. Dude, he he's very Connorish in a lot of things that he does, but he's starting to develop his own little style out of it. So, big things for I, him coming up. You are watching way more than me. I, you know, I was interested to see how the De Silva guy. What do you think about him t- pulling pulling the um, the Cormier games and? The New York State Athletic Commission is like, nah, bro. We we didn't seen that trick before. No, no. He, I mean, he got tapped <laughs> that out. was funny though. Yeah, he got tapped out, so it wasn't really a good thing for him at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, if you're gonna ask me, like that Bellator card, like nothing is gonna last in my memory. Is like, man, I you remember that night? Well, I guess the only thing I, I, I give it a D, I give it a D minus. I I give it a B minus. Because the presenta- I give it a, the presentation. What? I like the presentation a lot. Because it's, it's NYC. Such a vastly different. Well, did, you didn't go to two hundred five, right? No. Okay, that's the standard. Like that's the best non um, Mayweather Pacquiao goes without. Like that's the biggest combat sports. I was there, but two hundred five was the best UFC event I've been to, and it wasn't even in Vegas. You compare it to that, that thing is like. Ugh. Child's play. They like amateurs compared to 205. 205 for everything. From Madonna to Charlize Theron in the crowd to Connor throwing chairs on, on Wednesday and busting ass on Saturday. You can't top that in the garden. I, you can't tell if I was in Madison Square Garden, so you get a D in my book. This is in the garden. You can't even tell that you were in the garden. The Mecca, as they keep calling it. I mean, I, I give last night B plus, um, and um, uh, Oklahoma after that B minus. Oklahoma City gets a B though. It was it was it was undercover, but we saw some stuff memorable. We saw uh, Heavy Johnny get knocked out, as you said. Of course, Kevin Lee. I, I think we're gonna be looking back at this fight, Kevin Lee, is when he became a star to all y'all. Yeah, we we were the man that knew the plan. We knew about this. Actually, Matt knew it before me. I get mad at Spops. Matt turned me on to him before. He said, "Man, no one's he cool, man. He can fight." And I said, "I gotta see him fight." 
And then he's, as, and he's a great guy on top of that. And then nobody's going to forget the Felice and Justine, um, Kish fight. I ain't never seen nobody have that and, and, um, <laughs> out and they still, <laughs> still didn't tap out. That's very impressive. <laughs> Did you see that live? I was a the cage and I didn't see that. No, I, I was in the back doing post fight interviews and, uh, I'm glad I didn't see it because that was disgusting. <laughs> but, uh, no, um, yeah, with Felice, man, I guess kind of the, Bad thing, I guess. I had my first moment. <laughs> Matt, my f- Matt, Matt turned into that reporter that makes people cry like they do on Dateline. Yeah, NBC. man. I, I made my first fighter cry in a post-fight interview. Um, <laughs> I asked police why she didn't get the res- why she felt she wasn't getting the respect she deserved, and she said, "I don't think I'm young and beautiful enough." And which I can kind of see where she's coming from in a way, but. I don't agree with her at all because if you like scroll through her Instagram, if you scroll through all the people that follow her, like they're on, like they like Felice because of her looks, like and how she carries herself. You know what I mean? But I think more so for Felice is that she doesn't really make it seem like she's all the way in with fighting. You know, there's there's sometimes where she gets on the mic and she's like, you know what, I'm feeling really good, ready to get back in there. And other times she's just like, ah, oh, whatever's next. You know, whatever, whatever. Like, unless, until you start getting on the mic and start demanding stuff, you know, like, you know, she said she wasn't going to call anybody out, but, you know, it, it's one of those things, man. You got to make people believe that. Yeah, it's crazy that, that she's that good and she's, like, lacking confidence. It's like, she's, in my opinion, world class. No, I agree. Right. Like, me, me and John Morgan, you know, we were backstage all night last night. And as soon as, before that bout started, we were like, Felice is about to make this really, really ugly. She's about to get in Justine Kish's stuff and just ragdoll her. And that's exactly what she did. You know, she's really, really good. She's, I mean, she's selling herself short in a lot of ways. I think she's just, you know, I think maybe that loss to uh, Paige kind of hurt her confidence a lot. But she's won since then, though. Oh, yeah, she's won, obviously, yeah. But I don't know. I think that may be sticking with her in the back of her mind, kind of, because Paige got that opportunity um, maybe when she didn't necessarily deserve it. I don't know. That's a whole other bag of worms. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I stayed at the at the political side on that one. But um, her um, what's it called? Her friend and um, um, training partner, um, Carla Sparza looked it good. My only thing about Carla, I like watching the fight. She she goes at it, and she's kind of got that Latina like never say never, but. That grit and grind is not going to work. I don't think she's got enough skills to stay with the lead. Of course, we saw what happened to JJ. That's when I became a JJ fan that night. Oh, well, <laughs> and then no um, world, I was there live. That, that's the most brutal whooping I've seen on a chick um, in person. And then um, I don't think she could, could compete with Cordelia because her hands are not good enough. So it's like as good as her wrestling is, I don't think she could beat um, Carolina. It's like the people she's going to have to beat to be on that level – it's like her tools are not good enough. I don't. I know she's trying to work on them. Like she had a nice little jab, and she was keeping off of her. But those type of fighters, that's not going to work. You don't have to need more. Like well, you, she had two tools. They got four tools. Oh, for sure. Yeah, the, the striking game has to evolve like drastically. And you know, it's kind of like that thing with Ronda that we saw. Like Ronda never improved her striking. Nah. Like Carla's getting better. She's getting better in the striking department, but you still have to make a gigantic leap while not falling in love with your hands like Ronda did. Like Ronda thought she was a boxer all of a sudden. <laughs> Edmonds, you ruined that girl. Yeah, like Ronda, and you got her no. doing TV shows and movies. No, as long as Carla keeps improving, showing the little the little advances in her game that she does, but keeps at the forefront, her game is wrestling. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. I don't know if she'll ever beat someone like Joanna, but she'll get up there. She'll earn another shot as long as she keeps progressing. Um, when you think about was like Kev kind of doing it, also he we have a lot of nuggets from our boy Kev um, about opening up the weight classes. Like they they it's approved in California at the one sixty fives and the one seventy fives and stuff like that. When you think about that, so uh, how many people damn near kill themselves to fight, which is crazy. Like both those guys are at one eighty. And they had to cut the 155. Why can't they just fight 180? <laughs> uh, it's a great question. <laughs> it's, amazing. it's a great question. As long as you're the same size, to me, it shouldn't matter. Now, if you got one dude's 195, one dude's 180, now that's a big difference. But both dudes within five pounds on fight night, it really shouldn't matter. Yeah, and that's, you know, again, like, 
I've, I've said it so many times, man. There's no reason for guys to cut down to 155 just to step on a scale to say, hey, I'm 155 right now, and tomorrow you'll both be 180. Like, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. I, li- I like one championship for bumping everybody up a weight class and monitoring their weight more often. Like, a weight class is supposed to be there to say, you guys are 170 pounders, so you should fight each other. No, you guys are not 200 pounders cutting down to 170 for a 10 minute window and then getting right back up to 200. Like that, it, that's just not how it's supposed to work. No, that, 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 it's, it, it's, it's just, not healthy. It, it just don't make any common sense. Like the funny thing, can even admit is like basically like my livelihood didn't depend on this. I know I'm stupid. That's just crazy. Yeah, like that's the crazy part, right? Um, the guys know that there's health risks there, and as if the fighting itself wasn't dangerous enough. You're going to put your body through that and then get in there. And I I get it. It's kind of like a rite of passage. It's kind of like a routine. Like you got to put yourself through the fire of what cutting weight to earn the reward of stepping in the octagon. Like there's that mentality going on that I've I've heard from other fighters talk about before. Um, And it's just a little off base, man. They have to get out of that mentality. Um, It's like so old school. Yeah, it's very old school, very, very old school, and it's just unnecessary. It's kind of like the old school method of training where guys would just, like the shoot box guys that would just get in there and just bang it out and, like, have, like, legit fights day in and day out. Like, that's not smart training. And, you know, we've seen guys go away from that now. <laughs> uh, but it's just a lot of things like that, man. As the sport evolves, man, things like that will get better. Things will change. Weight cutting, I think, I hope, will get figured out. But... It's just not there yet. Just not there yet. What else from the uh, from the event? I mean, you know, me and you, we both hopped on the road, hit that little two and a half, three hour road trip. What else? What else you take away from OKC? Uh, fans, I, I get very disappointed when fans start doing the nonsense. Did you catch the booze? Um, on the um, what time they what fight it was? It was the uh, the Tim Means fight. Tim Means came in. Did what he had to do, did a lot of body work, which is why his opponent, Mr. Alex Garcia, couldn't do nothing in the third round. Didn't look like he was doing nothing in the first round. Get You get hit in the belly 15 times and go try to fight somebody and see what happens. And people are booing because he was constantly landing and playing it safe at the same time. It's like, why don't people get the sport in both? People do the same thing in boxing. I keep telling them, I'll keep saying it's on purple and my black ass face. There's nothing cool about getting hit. Ask the fighters. They don't think it's cool. So why are you booing this person? Because he's winning the fight and oh, he's not getting hit. Like if, if y'all, if you, I'll tell you now, know, if you're that fan that, oh, their, their job is to entertain and da da da, don't spend no money on Mayweather McGregor because Foy's not getting hit. <laughs> <laughs> so don't spend your money. You don't really be mad. And again, like I said last episode, you can go back and listen. I said this. If you're booing, you're telling me you can do better. So get in there and do better. If you're going to be sitting out there and boo somebody who's literally in there fighting right now. Like, it's just so disrespectful to me. And I heard it, man. Like, I wasn't cage side for it. I was. I know you were. Like, the only fight I was actually cage side for was the BJ Penn one. They just had people coming in and out so quick. Like, yeah. I couldn't step away. And I actually, I missed Clay Glita. But we did, man, he, he had a great performance. It was good to see him get back in the win column after a two year hiatus. And the, the man, the man, he's, I like the fact that, yeah, he, he admit too. Like, one thing that Kev didn't want to come on and tip his card is combat sports. My other favorite saying, what, what kind of game is it? It's a young man's game. Yeah. That, the, the prime example, Clay Gooden knows he's at the end. He's like our age in mid thirties that he's closer to the end than he is at the beginning, but he's worked hard enough and went to Alpha Male and evolved enough with the game that he can still put on a good show and he can do nothing but respect a person like that. He's not like, Well, I fought forty fights before, I know what I'm doing. Like, no, you know if you're gonna win and keep up with these youngsters, you better do what these youngsters are doing or the game will pass you by. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, he looks solid, man. He looks solid. Um and he's he's a guy. His style is never easy for anybody. So oh, that pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah, that's that annoying style that nobody wants to fight. No, nah, but the thing is, though, you have to deal with it. And the guy last night, uh, Mr. Koch, couldn't deal with it. He thought he could, and in that second round, he didn't want none. Yeah, it's kind of like the Khabib thing, man. Khabib does the same thing. He just gets in your face, like he's gonna wrestle the, the you know what out of you until you break. Like that's what he does, right? And that's that's kind of what Clay tries to do. Um, but yeah, I agree with that, man. Um, 
other than that, like the, I thought it was pretty good atmosphere, pretty good environment out there um, in, in the arena. Obviously, it wasn't like the biggest show on the, on the planet. Uh, we can tell that obviously by the media turnout. You know, media had to choose between Bellator's biggest pay per view ever, um, which is their second one uh, ever. So kind of. Oh, Bell- Bellator! It was either, it was either Bellator, Bellator or gets that. nothing. I will, I will, for now, yeah. on Bellator, I'm gonna tell you on, on the air. I'm gonna let my man take care of the Bellator uh, until I see something. I feel like I got jipped off my fifteen dollars. Went to the movie theater to watch it for the show purposes, and I saw all I saw was Tom Fullery. Got senior citizens <laughs> fighting in the main main event. You got you got Vanderlei basically saying that Chell was cheating because all he did was wrestle, and that's part of the flu. like, bro. It's not two thousand no more. Pride. He's still doing the pride thing. Like he pulled guard, thinking Chell's gonna be like, okay. Let me go in and try to beat you and maybe get you an arm bar. Like he pulled guard. Like who does that in 2017? Like he's like like Brendan Shaw put it perfectly on air that that is like the old school way of thinking. The game has passed Vanderlei by. I agree. I agree. It's just a weird matchup to have headlining that event. I mean, yeah, th- those names will sell because again, they're storied history. Everybody knows Chell Sonnen. Everybody knows Vanderlei Silva. So, but what have they done lately? Yeah, exactly. You know, and that, that's what Bellator does. Like, that's how Bellator is going to promote their big tentpole shows like this. We're going to find two legends with well-established names that have been in all types of promotions, and we're going to promote the hell out of them. And, uh, you know, that's what they did. I, I'm interested to see the numbers come back on it. Um, I don't think there's been any numbers released just yet, but uh, I'm interested to see how it did. Gotcha. I'm really interested. And and on a, on a show note, please um please um give us some support and um send us questions, emails. Hey, you think we suck? Hey, we we work on it. But good or bad, we want feedback. Just help us grow the show. I, I think I think that should be our motto: grow the show. My man, my man, if you see on the stream, got the slipping dead podcast shirt. I don't even got one of those. That, that's a damn original up in this. It's the OG. It's the OG <laughs> right there. Brand new. <laughs> So, so, Auto suppresses, literally. <laughs> so, so literally, we, we're trying to grow the show. So, good or bad, we're, we're open minded. We don't take it personal. We're trying to make this game tight. Kevin Lee's just the tip of the iceberg. We, we're trying to get this show rolling. We rolling! Yeah! Shout out, Bird Watson. <laughs> we got to end it on that. That's the way to end the show, right there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs>